Hello, my comrades. Today I want to share my uh, classic Italian ragu recipe. And here is uh, most of the things we need for this recipe. Of course, minced beef. I have uh, five large white onions, tomatoes. I have also two red onions, garlic, carrots, chili powder. This is about two heaping tablespoons. Um, I have uh, parmesan, of course. Um, that's a nice flavoring for the sauce. I have pancetta. And um, again, I'm not using this whole thing, but um, I just used a little part of it and it's a really nice flavoring for this dish as well. I have some butter there, um, salt of course, olive oil. Yeah, that's, uh, that's most of the things uh, that we need for this recipe. I just start off with browning my minced beef. This is about 700 grams or so of uh, minced beef that I uh, get from where I work, which is uh, a, a butcher shop in Oslo. Um, I always start when I make this recipe to brown my beef because there is a lot of flavor that you can get from just browning this mince beef and you also get some more structure to to the actual um, you know, meat in the sauce when you brown it. So I'll just brown all of this. Um, and meanwhile, while that's browning, I'm just cutting up all my onions. Um, and the reason I use both white and red onions is because they have a slightly different flavor. And I do like to combine them to bring out different flavors into the sauce. Um, yeah, so just cut all of that up. And it does look like a lot of onions, um, and it is a lot of onions, but it's really gonna cook down a lot. So here is uh, my pan after I have browned the meat, beef um, and as you can see there was a lot of brown bits in the pan and you want all of that to stay in the pan that will flavor the onions and it will flavor the entire dish as well. So just dump all of your onions in there um, and we are going to brown these for quite a while. I'm adding some salt now at this stage. Um, because that lets the onion release a lot of the water. And just a small side note, I usually would add pancetta at that point as well before I add the onion, so I just forgot about it, so I'll add it a little bit later, as you will see. And while the onions are browning, I'm just cutting up my carrot and my garlic. Um, I will put all of that in my food processor because I'm being lazy, <laughs> but you can also cut it by hand. Um, yeah, again, here's the pancetta that I would have added with before the onions, but I just forgot. So do that if you're using pancetta. Um, here's all the the garlic that I'm using, all the carrots that I'm using. You, If you do chop it by hand, you want quite a fine chop for this. Uh, I like it to not be very chunky because I want it to be part of the sauce. Um, instead of being like big chunks of carrots in there. So here's the onions at maybe if the 15 minute mark, they still need longer, I think, here. Um, I like the onions to be like completely uh, cooked down, caramelized. That is very flavorful when you do that with onions. So yeah. Uh, again, here's a couple more things that I want to add to my sauce. This is some sun-dried tomatoes. Um, this is optional, of course. If you don't have it, don't worry too much about it. Um, it's just a little bit of umami to add to the sauce, which is always good. I also have some truffle salt that I got in Italy. Um, this, again, is optional. You don't need to add this, but if you have it, you can definitely use it here. Um, yeah, so that's that's just a couple of optional things um, if you want to use it. I also have some chili powder, like I mentioned. This is, I think, about two heaping tablespoons. Um, again, that's also uh, flavoring for the sauce. And you don't need to use that much if you don't like spicy food. Um, I really like spicy food and I... Uh, always add a lot of chili powder to my ragu because I think that that's um, it really complements the rest of the sauce. I think um, here I'm just adding my truffle salt um, to the onions that are browning. I think they still need just a little bit more, uh, so I'll put them back on the stove for a little bit. But these are getting very close to done, um, and it takes about 30 minutes to brown these onions on medium high heat. 
uh, is what I usually do. Um, and then after 30 minutes, I add all my carrots and garlic. And this just needs about five more minutes before we're ready to add tomato paste and tomatoes. Um, yeah, so put them back on, on the stove for about five minutes until they cook down a little bit. Then I add my tomato puree uh, or tomato paste. Um, this is about four heaping tablespoons, I would say. Um, and just let that cook down for a little bit just to get rid of that little metallic taste that um, tin tomato paste can have sometimes. Um, I'll just let that sit on the stove for another five minutes before I, I add the rest of the ingredients here. Now that, that cooks, now that that has cooked down a little bit, I'll add my tin tomatoes. Uh, these are whole peeled tomatoes, but you can also use just like pre-chopped uh, tomatoes. Um, I'm just using whatever I have on hand usually. Um, just chopping those up with my spoon a little bit so that they break down. And then I uh, will add back, uh, I will add my dried tomatoes, I'll add back my minced beef that has been browned like I said earlier um, mix that all together and I'm adding my chili powder again you can use less if you don't want it so spicy um, yeah and there's some water and then I, I just use my potato masher to m m like mash up some of the meat because they're in quite big like little chunks and I like them to be like slightly smaller I'll just mash them a little bit to break it up some um, and then uh, I you can could also see that I put some water in there and uh, some more butter here I'm grating up some parm and this will actually cook for about 12 to Everything from 12 to 20 hours is what I usually do. Um, I highly recommend that you at least cook it for 12 hours because the flavor just turns so amazing when it's allowed to sit for that long. This I believe was after 14 hours or so. Um, the fat has really rendered out of the beef and it is just lovely. The meat is so tender. The the tomatoes and the chili powder and the carrot, all of it has like melted together. It creates this amazing, amazing flavor. So I highly recommend to cook it for that long, even though that sounds like a long time. Um, you don't have to do anything. You just let it sit on low heat on your stove overnight or all day. Um, and it's really, really, really worth it, I think. Um, here I'm just cooking, you know, putting it on pasta. Um, of course, that's maybe the first thing you'll think about when you think about ragu. But there's many other things you can do with ragu when you get sick, sick of eating pasta, if you if you ever get sick of eating pasta. <laughs> um, here's, uh, I put it on pizza sometimes, and that's also really good. Um, and... Uh, you can also use it as your lasagna sauce. You just need some bechamel, some lasagna plates, and some cheese, and you're good to go. Um, this is how I make lasagna. Uh, I could could make a video on that too if you guys want it. But um, again, you can make reg you can use ragu for many different things, and ragu is always good. <laughs> I make this like a lot probably too much <laughs> I always like to have pasta sauce um, uh, because you know it's simple it's flavorful you can always make something with it so here's the lasagna um, I hope you try out this recipe it's really delicious I think everyone should know how to make a good ragu because that's it's a comforting recipe it's delicious it feeds a lot of people yeah, um, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you try it. Please go, please subscribe.